And some young Austinites could help reshape the city's transit system. Project Connect teaming up with high school students, part of a design project on the Orange Line. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a pilot internship program. It focuses on that 21-mile light rail transit corridor. Candy Rodriguez is live from the drag near the UT campus this morning with a look at the impact this is having on young people, especially girls who are having um, an interest in the steps of this next development. Good morning. Yeah, Sally, Tom, good morning. And students not only got to participate in the process and learn about the process, but they got to give their input. This stop, for example, here they recommend more shade coverage. As you can imagine, that would be a, a good thing on a hot day like today. And this is actually going to be one of more than 20 stops along the Orange Line, which will run from North Austin. We're talking the Tech Ridge area here through the drag and then south to Slaughter Lane, but it'll take years to complete. And in the meantime, not only are they trying to get that input from the high schoolers, but potentially recruit the next generation. High school junior B. Jackson is a problem solver. I love being given a set of rules and challenges to like figure your way out through and just come up with a solution with. They got the opportunity to do that this summer at Project Connect's pilot high school internship program. The goal, to work with students who go to schools along the Orange Line corridor to show them how their neighborhoods will transform. That's how we ensure that we really fit into the fabric of the community. Jackson was one of 10 students, and out of those students, seven of them were young women. Representation is everything um, in, in any industry, and uh, transit, the majority of uh, users are women and children, um, but that is not reflective of leadership or the industry of, of transit and transportation. A report from the Census Bureau shows women account for nearly half of the country's workforce, but only make up about 30% of STEM workers. And so by actively changing that and, and seeking out other leadership and, and other women and non-binary folk to to join this industry is really important to shape how it looks in the future to make it more successful. And one day, B hopes to be a part of that change. I think I'd definitely try to do something in STEM. Each student who participated in the six week internship program got $1,000 and those behind the program hope to expand it next summer to open it up to more students and to other transit lines like say the blue line which runs from downtown to the airport. But when it comes to the orange line, it'll take several years to complete. It won't be done until sometime around 2029. Sally, Tom. Thank you, Candy. It's so exciting, though, that they can say I was a part of that design when it does finish up. Thank you, Candy, for that. Let's take a closer look, though, at Austin. Austin ranking the top Texas city for women to find STEM jobs. That is something so proud of to be proud of here in Central Texas. The Workforce Solutions, that group says it is the second best city in the whole South. STEM jobs account for nearly 13 percent of all jobs in Austin, and women hold a quarter of those spots, so about 18,000 jobs, so more girls in STEM. Yes. You've got a STEM we job. that. I've got a STEM job, and i got too many boys on my team. <laughs> I need, need a female more. in that yes, weather center. Did. Yeah, now that I'm down Mandy, I'm like, okay, we're about to light some candles, put some bows, glitter. Like, we, we need some of that female presence. So I love that story, Candy. Thank you.